Today's sponsor is Audible.com, a leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. And PNP Games, your online source for everything video games. Visit their website at pnpgames.com or at one of their three retail locations in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alrighty, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Nintendo Pulse episode 61. It helps if I unmute my microphone. Um, I'm glad that I have monitoring on so I can hear myself because I was just like, that sounds awful weird. I'm not hearing my voice in my ears. I wonder what the problem is. Oh, crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh, now you were muted too. Now you're not muted, Steven. This is just I a, said, well done. This is just a <laughs> bit of fail here um, today on the Nintendo Pulse podcast. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's start. Let's start this over again. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Nintendo Pulse. This is episode number sixty-one. We're recording this on a Wednesday, which is strange for us. Uh, which is the eighteenth of September, twenty thirteen. As always, I'm your host Lloyd Hannison, and joining me, Stephen Munn. Stephen, how are you? The person that didn't just speak thirty seconds ago. Hump day. <laughs> That's probably what the problem is. I think the uh, doing it on a Wednesday instead of a Thursday is throwing off my uh, my timing. Um, that'll be my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah. All right. Well, let's get into the show. Steven, how the heck are you? I am doing pretty well. Thank you very much. Good. Good. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> I expected more. Yeah. Um, well, that's, you know, it's... Uh, it's all right. I'm, you know, doing some, did some gaming this week and uh, did some relaxation. Tried to get some more sleep. I got some more sleep over the weekend. And um, sleep is good. Uh, that cutting is cutting out caffeine. You're cutting out caffeine mostly. Are you cutting? Are you like fully getting off of caffeine? Are you trying to get off caffeine? I was trying okay. and I failed. <clears throat> well, it's um, tough. Once you hit the seven, is. once you hit the like the four day to seven day mark, it's really painful. Yeah, so I ended up, you know, uh, <laughs> Jay Cargooth in the uh, chat room is like, elaborate, rejected <laughs> Dalek phrase, <laughs> which is just perfect because I've been watching so much Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> and I'm not going to be giggling about that this for the rest of the show now. That was very good. Um, I drank a, a cup of tea earlier today because <clears throat> I just, I couldn't, I couldn't resist it anymore. I mean, I, I I'm a big I've been a big tea drinker for a long time right. and uh, you know, I had managed to keep myself from drinking any after 4 p.m. and I had a cup of tea at like 7 o'clock which was <laughs> really stupid but I knew I had the podcast so right. um, I knew I had to stay up so It'll keep you I should be okay. So you won't crash or maybe, yeah. but maybe you'll hit the caffeine crash and you'll just like mid-sentence you'll just head will hit the microphone and oh yeah yeah like steven's snoring right now i will turn his mic down in case he wakes up and we'll continue on without him right that'll be great yeah i have i had a friend who did the full detox thing and he he went off caffeine and uh, he still hasn't started back up he doesn't drink caffeine at all and i'm like wow why would why would you ruin your your life man (laughs) (laughs) i dropped um coffee uh a couple of times for um months or years at a stretch really? and drank just tea and not even that frequently but um that's still you know that's still some caffeine so. sure and well most this was, the first day was really hard it had those headaches and everything like that yeah but. yeah it, it gets really bad um most tea will have the same amount of caffeine that coffee will have um if you have sure. like a if you have like a, a strong black tea it'll have the pretty much the same amount of caffeine content as a cup of coffee and a cup of tea um, not a lot of people realize that. So they're like, yeah, I'm off caffeine. I'm drinking tea instead. It's like, well, sorry to break it to you, <laughs> but you are having pretty much the exact same caffeine content. Um, maybe just tastes different. Yeah. I don't, I could never give up coffee. I, I love my coffee too much. Yeah. All right. Well, um, this isn't the coffee talk podcast, although that would, that would be a great show. We should start sure. that Stephen. Sure. Although let's do you that. don't drink coffee anymore. So it'd be a really boring. So Stephen, well, have I a good coffee this week. It decaf coffee oh well oh, that's, that, that's, that's not even real coffee <laughs> that would be that would be terrible yeah <laughs> cool um well on my side of uh of things um i've been 
severely lacking in sleep again. Um, I did the midnight launch for Grand Theft Auto, which is, um, uh, I did not just in Cargooth. I will have to do that uh, in between sentences. Um, sorry for people that aren't uh, uh, in the chat room. You would have missed that. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, I did the midnight launch for Grand Theft Auto. And um, that that was bad because I didn't get home till about one in the morning. And then I was just like, OK, I'm going to put the game down. And then I put the game down and somehow the disc fell out of the game case and went into my PlayStation 3, which spontaneously turned itself on and started the install. I don't know. I still don't know how that happened. It was just this weird thing where games flew across the room and I was forced to sit there with a controller in my hand. I was powerless for whatever was uh, forcing me to uh, sit there and watch the install happen. Uh, and then I ended up playing a little bit. And a little bit turned into about four hours <laughs> or it, it was about four in the morning by the time I finally went to sleep, uh, which wow. was super. I'm old. I can't do two hours of sleep a night. So my whole like body has been thrown off since then, um, which really sucks. Um, so but anyway, that's how I started the week. And then uh, today was uh, Allie's birthday. Uh, she turned six. So she got her. Um, I, I managed <clears throat> to. As I talked about in the last podcast, head out and get the uh, um, uh, DS, uh, 3DS XL that I had said that I was going to Walmart for. I ended up flying there at midnight just to be sure that I'd get one. Turns out that everything was on sale because it was this big anniversary sale. So there was about 100 people in line waiting to buy cheap televisions and other stuff. And it's like, really? Seriously? Uh, so I waited in line at Walmart. And again, like last Thursday night, um, well, I guess Friday morning. So that's like two days uh, within like four days that I was up until super late and getting zero sleep. So I think that's that's the reason why I'm paying for it right now. Um, yeah. And people listen to me are like, midnight's not late. And you know what? You're right. Midnight is not late. I stay up to midnight most days. It's just different when you're out of the house at midnight and then decide to go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, oh, no. And, and then uh, that kind of ruins you. So, yeah. So I did the the midnight thing uh, on, I guess, Thursday night, uh, Friday morning. Got a pink and white 3DS XL for my daughter. Uh, it was her birthday today. Gave that to her. Um, my, I bought a 3DS, uh, a pink Princess Peach 3DS case that my son gave her. Um, so she was like super blown away. She was happy for her 3DS. She was happy for her game case. Uh, or her uh, system system holder case thingy. Um, so all day today, she's been talking about it at school, and she played 3DS a bunch. And and then today we watched the first part of Jurassic Park because she saw it at a store, and she was really intrigued and wanted to watch it, even though we said it would probably be scary for her. Um, but she's a little trooper, so we watched the first little bit up until the point when the the T Rex um, is attacking, and then we're like, yeah, maybe we'll turn it off now. Maybe it's uh, it's time to stop watching that movie. But uh, it was funny. We were talking about that. I mentioned it in the pre-show. We were in the a future shop here, which is it's kind of like Best Buy. It's actually owned by Best Buy. And uh, it was on the TVs. And she's like, oh, what, what movie is that? We're like, oh, it's a movie that came out, Jurassic Park. And she's like, oh, it looks cool. I, I want to watch it. I'm like, oh, I still I have it on DVD. We could probably watch that. And I was like, but it's probably going to be too scary for you. So I don't I don't think that's a good idea. Um, those dinosaurs, I mean, they're they're not real. They're made by computers, but they're they still look pretty real and, and they're kind of scary. And she's like, Dad, they don't look real at all. It's like, oh, OK, <laughs> well, I feel really bad now that uh, old 3D computer animation, which looked like lifelike um, to my little girl, doesn't look lifelike anymore because that's how far things have progressed <laughs> since that movie came out, <laughs> oh, which is just absolutely redonkulous but uh but yeah that's been my week it's been a lack of sleep and jurassic park and 3ds's so it's been a kind of a cool week sounds exciting yeah uh, it kind of does um i guess before we get into what we've been playing um how about we take a small little break okay um well, since we haven't talked about games yet why should we start now sure, um, let's talk about audiobooks instead <laughs> We're just hitting hitting all the subjects here today, Stephen. Uh, yeah, let's take a small break and uh, talk about our friends over at audible.com. Huge fan of their service, huge fan of what they do. And um, they are basically a service where you can sign up for a monthly plan and get credits to download uh, books, audiobooks. Uh, they have hundred over 100,000 titles um, in every single genre. Um, and there's lots there that you can check out. Um, I, I found one today that I actually want to listen to. 
um, not because I know the book, um, but because of the the narrator that reads it. Uh, it's called The Final Empire, Mistborn, Book One. Um, and this is um, Brandon Sanderson's uh, new trilogy or new um, franchise, I guess. Um, if you wanted to buy this audiobook separately, it's $55.93. Um, but you can get it free with your 30 day free trial here um, from Audible. But um, this is the, the voice of the guy. Control. If you that did the wheel of time books. Hand. He has the best voice ever. The obligator nodded, standing quietly in his gray robes. He seemed pleased, which was a good thing. The ska <laughs> weren't actually Tresting's prop. <laughs> you can hear him talk about the ska. I don't know what the ska <laughs> is, but I want to hear more about him talk about the ska. Like he could, he could read the dictionary, and it would be, it would be uh, just a thrilling ride of um, from Aardvark to, um, I don't know, zebra. It would be great. He to has to be to saying things like "I Sedai and yeah. <laughs> he's just he's the best voice. And yeah, and and if you want to listen to this guy talk for twenty four hours, I mean, this is the book to do it. Do it on, and yep. uh, you can do it over at Audible dot com. So if you want to listen to this book uh, uh, or any other uh, book that would tickle your fancy, including the seven hundred books that are in the Wheel of Time series, they're all available on Audible dot com. <laughs> Audible, each of which is like six to seven hundred pages long. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> It's it's awesome. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so yeah, they have over a hundred thousand titles from virtually every and any genre. You'll be able to find what you're looking for. Um, so you can get this book or any other for free, um, and also sign up for a free thirty day trial over at audiblepodcast.com/slash Nintendo Pulse. That's audiblepodcast.com forward slash n i n t e n d o p u l s e. So you spell it out, Nintendo Pulse, and you can pick up this book for free. And also get a free 30-day trial of the audible.com service. Um, huge thanks to Audible for supporting the, the podcast network for the month. And um, yeah, everybody out there, I urge you to go check it out. Uh, sign up for free. It's risk-free. You get to keep the book after if you don't uh, choose to continue. So there really is nothing um, that... that uh, there really is no issue for you uh, signing up and, and you're, you're not going to get charged for anything that you don't want. Um, but you're going to you're going to download the book. You're going to pop your earphones or your earbuds in and you're going to get uh, whisked away to a, a wonderful world, uh, depending on the book that you that you choose. And uh, you'll you'll find that uh, people reading a book to you, reading every single word uh, is just as good as reading the book yourself. Uh, and actually, sometimes even better because you can do it while you are mowing the lawn or doing dishes or, or doing laundry or working out. Um, I used to listen to audiobooks all the time when I was on the when I was on the exercise bike. And it's just the, the best way to spend time. Um, and uh, you can even listen to it at 2x speed, uh, which makes the book go by uh twice as fast obviously but uh it, the way that it's done you, you still understand all the words it's uh it's a great service i urge you to check it out audiblepodcast.com forward slash nintendo pulse all right steven let's get into the the meat of the show uh, we actually got some news this week but uh, before we do that um what have you been playing anything new uh not anything new no <laughs> i've uh, actually been playing a lot of animal crossing new leaf of course well, that's uh, new. It has it's right there in the editions. title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> when when New Leaf Two comes out. Oh yeah, it'll be uh, new, when new, new Animal Crossing New Leaf New, new Two. Leaf. Yes, <laughs> squared. When that comes out, that's going to be amazing. Um, <clears throat> a few more badges. Uh, I got all of the September creatures, uh, which is good because the violin beetle which was only available in June for a little while and then comes back in September. Mm -hmm. um, I missed it in June uh, because I started looking for it at the very end of the month because right. I didn't realize it was one of the items I could find, one of the creatures I could find. But uh, either yesterday or the day before, I think it is, I found the last uh, creature, which was the spiny lobster uh, that you have to dive for. Nice. So you have them all? So you can you can successfully find all the sea creatures if by just by getting all the ones that are out from launch to today? No, there's still a few that haven't come oh, around okay. yet. Okay. Um, there's some that start up in December, uh, and there's some early next year. Um, same with the insects and the fish and stuff like that. There's a bunch, uh, a small number mm -hmm. left of each uh, that haven't come out yet. So, um, Also, Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. The, the big announcement came out for Diablo 3 yesterday that 
blew me away and I'm <laughs> so excited about. And yeah. that is that they are getting rid of the auction houses. Which makes you want to go back and play as soon as they have the, the loot system 2.0 that they're talking about comes back in. Yeah, because I mean, I, I reinstalled Diablo 3 because I was so excited mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, well, I know this isn't going to happen till March, but I'm going to jump in and I'll have a little bit of fun with it. And the game is just, oh, I mean, <laughs> you kill things and nothing comes out. That's not what Diablo is about. And that's exactly the, been the problem. I mean, you know, they don't drop anything useful. Mm -hmm. Monsters almost never drop anything useful. So you have to buy things on the auction house. Yep. And I've never bought anything on the auction house. So I can't make it anywhere in the game. Yeah, I, I, we've talked about Diablo uh, previously on the network. I don't know if we did on this show. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like it, it, the, the loot was appreciating faster than I could um, basically farm the gold to buy it on the auction house. So when I was playing through in the hardest difficulty, I basically got to a point where I couldn't continue because I needed better equipment. And I couldn't buy the better equipment because I couldn't farm enough gold to buy that equipment. And the yeah. only way you could get that equipment was to beat bosses that were ahead of the point that I am at. So I, that, that's the only way that I could do it was to buy it off the auction house. Yeah. And I was just like, really? This is dumb. And then I yeah. stopped playing. Um, after buying the game twice for me and my wife, we just basically left yeah. it, which kind of made me sad. Same here. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be great. It'll be great to go back to it. And if it's fun, if the game becomes fun with, with in game loot, mm -hmm. um, loot 2.0, mm -hmm. uh, then, which is more like actually loot 1.0. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to the offline while they're at it. If they could do that, I would, I would play the game a lot more, I think. Just and, yeah, not because be it really. It, it really hurts me, but it would make me feel better about the whole thing. Yeah, and it, it also, it's a performance <laughs> issue because, I mean, I'm on a, um, a, a Fios connection here, so I get 15 down, hmm. which is more than I should ever need for anything. For sure. And yet, it impacts the performance of the game. You know, it, it I can have the settings turned all the way up because the performance, you know, my iMac can handle it. I've got right. the big one. But it still skips all over the place because it's That's all right. has to go over the internet and monsters are spawning in and out over the network. And it's like having to do everything that way, even when I'm playing single player is just ridiculous. Um, so after playing it for a few minutes, I was like, well, this is, you know, obviously I didn't expect it to change, but I figured I'd, I'd give it a shot and obvious a bunch of patches had come out since the last time. And then I went back and, and I played Diablo two, which was still installed on my windows partition and Diablo 2 is still awesome. It is still mm -hmm. a great game. It is still fun to kill little carvers that are hopping around in the stony field and they scream and they pop and all these great yellow rare items come out that are actually worth equipping. And uh, occasionally you see a unique item, which I <laughs> only saw one of right. the whole time playing Diablo 3 and yep. it wasn't even close to powerful enough. <laughs> <laughs> for me to want to use it. Uh, it's so uh, so ridiculous. Yeah. So I'm excited that come six months from now, the game may become fun. <clears throat> um, I hope so. Yeah. I really, so that's really hope pretty so. much it for this week. Cool. Um, yeah. I've been playing uh, a little bit as well. Um, Grand Theft Auto Five. playing, uh, I've probably put about four hours into that, so not anywhere near um, cutting into the main part of the story yet. Um, what a beautiful world that this game is in. Um, the, the world itself that you're in isn't very beautiful, but the actual environment itself is pretty amazing. Um, basically going from city, deep, deep city to uh, countryside to kind of hick kind of areas to farming areas to it's it just it's wonderful. Um, uh, the, the, the world is just amazing to just exist in and, and walk around in so that's been a lot of fun been playing that um i played and beat Killzone mercenary on the vita um talked about it uh, or i will talk about it on the bonus stage this week um if you're looking for a first person shooter on, on a vita that is pretty much the only one that you can play because uh, all the other ones are kind of horrible um but it is really really good it's like playing a playstation 3 uh, game which is a lot of fun and uh, Disney Infinity with the kids. That's pretty much all I've been doing on my Wii U. Um, my Wii U is pretty much turned on every day. And all we do is play Disney Infinity. And I go into Miiverse every once in a while if I have a notification. <laughs> so my Wii U is pretty much my Disney Infinity box right now in my house. Which is, uh, I don't know, that's kind of good. Kind of kind of fitting for a Nintendo platform to have something like that. 
uh, to play on it. Um, but yeah, that's about it, man. What do you cool. say we get into the rest of the show? Sure. Uh, notable releases this week. What's uh, what's coming out? Is there any large um, main um, main IP for Nintendo uh, mm. games coming out or anything like that? Can't think of any. No, oh, uh, I think the Pikmin came out already, right? Yeah, that, that was out already. Wonderful. Oh, and uh, oh, wait, Smash that's, Brothers. That's is... not a Nintendo property. Um, mm. I can't think of anything. Um, yeah. Maybe think. Yeah. Well, think... aside from Wonderful One Hundred One, which I believe does come out this week, it came out um, on Sunday, I think. Yeah, okay, so that's technically that this week, right? Release. Yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, also, we have a Legend of Zelda Wind Waker oh, yeah. HD, the eShop version, digital, that little for $50. Unknown, little unknown yeah. title. You may have heard of Zelda before. <laughs> <laughs> you may have heard of Zelda before. Uh, yes. yes. Um, so, yeah, this game is coming out. Um, it's like tomorrow, right? That is, uh, in fact, not tomorrow. It's coming oh. out on Friday. Friday. That's weird. That doesn't make sense on the 20th, right? Yeah. That was 20th, yeah. Yeah, so I guess that is uh, Friday. Well, it's a digital release, so I guess they can release it anytime they want. Hmm. Hmm. That's weird. Um, so, yeah, that, that comes out, uh, the digital version of that, along with the Wii U bundle um, with all that stuff packed in. So uh, do check that out. Um, I think Nintendo's going to have a, a really good uh, month for Wii U sales, finally, because I think... I, I know personally of about five people that are picking up the Wii U um, Wind Waker HD bundle, um, which is weird because uh, four of the five said they would never buy a Wii U. <laughs> and so four <laughs> of them are, are buying a Wii U when they said they would never would. And uh, five of them will sell at least. And that's just me asking a few people. So I think sure. uh, I think it'll be good to, um, to to see what the NPD numbers are next month to see what, uh, what, what happens if... Uh, this new bundle really pushed Wii U sales or the price drop pushed Wii U sales. But yeah, that's wouldn't that be amazing well. if it like suddenly became this runaway success? Like anything more than like 10,000 units would be really good. I, I'd, I'd be very, very happy with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but which is really actually kind of sad. Um, but yeah, yeah so uh, that's out. So if you're waiting for it, uh, you can finally go get it on Friday. So uh, go check it out. All right, uh, let's get into the news. We actually got some interesting stuff. Um, Nintendo announced um, two new big things um, today. Now, and this was all in a <clears throat> Nintendo Direct. Mm-hmm. It was. Um, and the first one is kind of, they're both kind of weird. They're both kind of releases that are odd releases for Nintendo. Not the actual um, games themselves, just the way that Nintendo is going about releasing them. So we'll talk first about We Fit You. So that'll be coming out. Um, If you want to download it, it'll be available November 1st. If you want to buy it in a box, you have to wait till December 13th. So again, they're doing that um, digital first before physical. Um, But the the difference with We Fit You on November 1st is that it's going to be a free download. It will be free for a month. So if you already have a Wii U um, balance board, uh, you can download this game and you can play um, essentially the whole title for free for an entire month. And if you want to keep the game, you can do that just by picking up the new Wii Fit meter, which is going to be nineteen ninety nine, and it's a little clip on pedometer that apparently does other things as well. Um, but if you buy one of those and you sync it to Wii, Wii Fit U, it will unlock the game, and you'll be able to keep it for free forever without any worries. You won't have to actually go and buy the hundred dollar box that comes out in December, which comes with the balance board and the pedometer and the game. So really kind of weird, um, kind of makes sense though. Nintendo um, wants to reward people for buying this big bulky uh, balance pad, uh, balance board uh, accessory way back in the day. Um, and they're doing it by saying, okay, I know you're already not using this big um, accessory peripheral thing. So how about you buy this other accessory peripheral thing um, that you probably won't use after a month and then we'll give you the game for free. Um, kind of a weird way to do it but i guess what they're hoping for is that enough people will buy the pedometer um enjoy having um their activities track the number of calories that they've burned off in walking and stuff and start using we we fit you uh on a daily basis um which is kind of what they've always wanted uh, with the we fit thing to be so i don't know see yep. what, what are your thoughts on on we fit you I think that it, you know, it's obviously a really sensible thing for Nintendo to release a Wii Fit U. Um, Wii Fit was a huge 
huge thing for mm-hmm. for the Wii, and um, I mean it was a big part of its ongoing <laughs> runaway success. And then they made you know what was the other one? Wii Fit Plus was the second one. Yeah, I think that was it with a bunch. I of have them both exercise but, thingies. Yeah. I have them both, but I, you know, I haven't used them since pretty much since they came out. I, right. I'm not sure I ever used Wii Fit Plus, but uh, you know, I, I still have my balance board. Um, you know, it's it, it's sitting there, and there's part of me that's tempted to do this because I, you know, I I've been looking at you know exercise options. I was shopping for a bicycle earlier today, mm-hmm. and twenty dollars for a pedometer is not bad. I don't actually own a pedometer unless you count my. 3ds XL. Sure, that would be nice if I could use that. You don't have um, the uh, the Pikachu pedometer that came with uh, no so that came with Pokemon because I know you're a big Pokemon fan. Oh yeah, that's that's me. It's <laughs> we actually got a, an email complaining like about our our Pokemon hate. So, which was <laughs> like, can you maybe get someone that likes Pokemon on the show to talk about Pokemon? It's like, oh wow, there are people who like Pokemon. I mean, I don't know any um, eight year olds. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> I'm just I'm just joshing. <laughs> I'm just jerking your chain, man. Uh, all right. Yeah. So you don't have the Pikachu pedometer. No, no, is... I don't have that. Um, I uh, owned it for a while because I bought um, the Pokemon Gold. Uh, it was a heart gold. Yep. And yeah. Soul silver. I bought Pokemon heart gold uh, and that gigantic tome of a strategy guide for my uh, ex-wife. And she played the game, I think, for a few minutes and lost interest and uh, never opened the guide and the pedometer vanished somewhere. I would presume that she took it with her when she moved out, but I think we actually sold Heart Gold. So maybe that maybe it went with it when we sold it. Um, but yeah, it did have it for, for a time. Hmm. Interesting. So, interesting. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it looks like it, it looks like it could be something interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't have it in this article, but they basically said that um, it essentially is going to have most of the activities that you could do in in We Fit You uh, or in We Fit rather um, with a bunch of other stuff, and of course the pedometer stuff will kind of factor into uh, into it as well. So when you pick up one of those, you'll be able to do a lot more with it. Um, I, I'm going to download it. I don't know whether I'm going to play it um, mm-hmm. much. But uh, I'll download it and I'll put fresh batteries in my Wii Balance board, provided the ones that have been in there for uh, five years haven't leaked uh, battery acid all over the inside of my Wii Fit board, Um, (laughs) which has probably happened, which means I should probably go check it soon to see if that actually happened. Um, It's weird. It's been sitting under a chair in my basement and I don't think we've turned it on in like five years or whenever Wii Fit came out. Like get, get the Wii Fit release date add two months and that's probably the last time it was turned on wow yeah i mean uh, i haven't seen a battery leak a modern battery leak in a you know yeah. ever yeah, the only batteries i've seen leak that were were from years and years and years ago and i don't think this was quite old enough for that <laughs> actually we've had a couple batteries leak in toys um, oh yeah that come i guess they come with the the really cheap um batteries from right from the factory somewhere in china and yeah, mm. they've leaked all over which is really kind of crazy that's nasty and, and gross yeah yep 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 cool um so yeah that's that's we fit you that's the first um kind of release c kind of thing that nintendo did today on their nintendo direct the next one is also weird it's renouncing a game that isn't available for download or available for purchase in stores um except maybe in the future at some point. Um, and that is uh, what they're calling a Wii Sports Club. Um, essentially, it's going to be a uh, HD version of the five original um, sports that were in Wii Sports. So uh, baseball, bowling, boxing, golf, and tennis. And um, these will have... Uh, basically, how it's going to be done is uh, you can download each game separately, each sport separately. And they're going to be released for, um, what is it, on November 7th. So they're going to be releasing Tennis and Bowling on November 7th. And it will be available for free for a day, a 24-hour period. (laughs) And then if you want to keep it, you can buy a day pass for $2. Or you can buy the actual full, I own this thing for $10, which is really weird um i guess it's kind of like a free rental it's kind of like a demo i guess that gives you one day to play it 
Um, but yeah, just another, I guess Nintendo's really playing, playing with this new purchase model stuff, um, which I'm, I don't hate. Obviously, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not disappointed at that, but it just seems kind of weird where you get it for free for 24 hours and then you could buy day passes for two dollars. It's like, really, would you ever buy a day pass for the for one of these sports? I guess if you're having a party and someone yeah. wanted golf and you didn't have it, it's like, fine, I'll buy it for two bucks and we'll play it. But I'd rather just spend the ten dollars. But yeah, I don't know. Really kind of weird. Hmm. Very, very kind of weird. What are, what are your thoughts yeah. on Wii Sports? Are you a fan of Wii Sports, Even I don't think we've ever talked about Wii Sports. Um, well, I, I mean, I have it, obviously, and um, like everyone does. And uh, I played it a lot. Uh, I spent a lot of time playing tennis and, and bowling, and that's it, right. on Wii Sports, uh, like everyone else. Mm-hmm. And it came out at parties, and everyone had a great time. And Yeah. Um, I Now, I, I didn't watch this direct, so maybe you can tell me. Is this just, these are the exact same games just lifted out of Wii Sports? Um, essentially, they're the same game, but they have um, added functionality. There's um, there's something that you can do. Uh, let me find exactly what Nintendo is calling it. Um, if you want to chat with people that are playing the games, um, because these are all available online for online play, so you can play over the internet with other people, which you couldn't do in Wii Sports. Um, but it's not as easy as just firing up your friends list and doing it. Nintendo wants you to make, um, uh, what is it? They want, they're calling it, well, the game is called Wii Sports Club. Um, and you have to make a state or regional club. And then you'll be able to chat with one another through, um, through that club. And then people that are in your club, you can play with them online. So they haven't really yeah. given that much more detail about what that entails. Is it only like I have to make a Winnipeg, Winnipeg club and join the Winnipeg club and I can only play with people in Winnipeg? Or is it could I create a regional club called VG Podcasts and have a bunch of VG Podcast listeners join it and then we can play together? Mm. Um, they didn't really get into that too much, or at least not what I saw. I didn't watch the full Nintendo Direct at all. Um, just been... Um, ingesting all the stories that have been posted online so i mean it's it's interesting the fact that you could play online is for me good enough if i could play bowling with uh some of my buddies i'm i'll i'll pay the 10 bucks no problem um because i had so much fun uh we sports bowling at parties it was just the the most fun that i think we ever had um tennis was good too um but if there's going to be some limitation for like geographic play um who knows um it's it's a weird release a weird uh packaging of this game um so who knows if the actual gameplay itself will be kind of weird and quirky nintendo likes to do weird things so i it wouldn't surprise me if that was the case but um but yeah sure enough uh not enough details are out for us to even make a call yet but um they're coming out soon ish so um i mean we can talk about that in in the next uh, couple months i mean november 7th is not too far away um and then we can maybe get some uh, listener bowling or tennis um tournament set up because i think that would be a lot of fun maybe could be (laughs) depends how well the uh the uh online play works yeah i mean for bowling online would be super simple to do because it's not real yeah. time but yeah when you get into things like tennis especially for boxing i don't even know how boxing would work because that's like total real time yeah but, maybe uh, that's why they want people to do regional stuff yeah definitely that could be the, the case so so yeah there we go two nintendo announcements um that came out of nowhere um just a last minute um nintendo direct so um, kind of interesting. So let's get into the rest of the news. Um, it came out this week uh, that Nintendo is well aware that we all want a unified Wii U and 3DS account, but they don't have anything to announce at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really bizarre. There was a, um, an interview uh, with Dan Edelman um, and Destructoid did an interview with them and they asked that uh, question of them and and um, and his response is, we don't have anything new to announce, unfortunately, other than we've definitely heard the feedback many times from both inside and outside the company. It's definitely something that we're very much aware of. All development for the infrastructure really happens out of Japan. So we're kind of communicated this need. Uh, we've we've kind of communicated this need in the market, and they are very much aware of it and working towards really just always improving the eShop. So it's kind of like, yeah, we know uh, these other people are doing the stuff. We have told them we want this stuff. They're doing their own stuff. Maybe the stuff that we want and the stuff that they they 
develop will at some point come together. Um, but yeah, that was probably the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the extent of what Nintendo will talk about it until they actually have something to announce. Um, yeah. I, th- I thought I'd throw this in because it's, um, that's more than I think any Nintendo exec has ever said about the unified accounts. Um, yeah. so at least if, if past Nintendo, um, behaviors or anything to go by they don't really um, acknowledge something um, publicly until they're pretty much ready to um, launch that something or at least talk about that something in in greater detail so i saw this interview and it's like oh okay well maybe in fact we will have something before the holidays because nintendo doesn't just talk about stuff that doesn't come true um or it could just be this guy was tired at the end of a long interview and was just sick of hearing this uh, many times and dan basically just said you know what we've heard we know you guys want it we want it to uh, we don't have anything to announce uh, type thing so i don't know yeah. i'm getting my hopes up but maybe i shouldn't what, what's your gut yeah feeling, Steven? I, I i i i'm actually less i'm feeling less encouraged <clears throat> about it after reading this oh really like yeah i mean this is like my uh, my expectation was that you know this update when they bring Miiverse to the 3DS that that's going to be with this big update for both platforms that unifies them right and that's you know we're talking the next month two months three months that's mm-hmm. when I was expecting that to happen the unified accounts mm-hmm. and he's basically saying we've told them in Japan that everybody wants this and they're not responding to us. <laughs> Yeah, and it's I guess like you could take it that way as well. That that's just what I'm getting. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I guess so. I I don't know. I I <laughs> I have a little bit more um, hope, I guess, in this. Mm-hmm. I I yeah, it, it has to happen. I mean, they wouldn't have called it the Nintendo Network ID unless they wanted you to use it in more than one area. They would have just called it the Wii U ID. Um, I I think. Um, the fact that the eShop knows everything that you've bought across all your platforms means yep. that there isn't a huge infrastructure that they have to create to um, properly um, register um, the purchase of all these games. They have mm-hmm. one central database. Now it's just um, coming up with an authentic- authentication system that will then um, rely on that database for purchase history and things like that. Yeah. I mean, it's not an impossible thing to do. Um, from a software development It doesn't even standpoint. seem like a difficult thing to do. No, no, not really. Not really at all. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I I am holding out hope that it will happen this year. Um, yeah. But I've been fooled in the past by Nintendo and we'll see if they have done it again. Yeah. I hope not. All right, moving on. Um, DuckTales Remastered. Steven, you had an interesting news item about that. Why don't you tell yeah. the listeners at home? Well, I hadn't gotten around to buying DuckTales Remastered yet, but I figured I'd probably buy it eventually, maybe when it went on sale on Steam. Um, But now, Capcom just announced today that it's going to be getting an on-disc retail release in November for all three of the console platforms that it's available on. That's Wii U, 360, and PS3. Yep. Previously, they had announced that there was going to be a PS3 release that was a box with a download code in it. Right. But now they are confirming that this is an actual physical disc in all three of these boxes. And it's $5 more than the downloadable version. Of course. Of course. Yes. It um, makes sense for it to be more. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure that 15 was a great price for DuckTales Remastered to begin with. I think I would have been more sold at 10 and 15 than 15 and 20. But I'm going to be honest, when this goes up, for sale on Amazon, I'm going to be pre-ordering the Wii U version on disc. Yeah, I, I kind of really want it. Um, personally, I have the PlayStation Three version. I kind of want the Wii U version, and I kind of want it. I, I kind of want the box because <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm stupid that way. Um, what I really wish it would do was the the mockups of the old NES box. Um, if they would release it like that with a, a disc inside of it with some strange case or something. I would be all over that if it came in an NES style uh, cardboard box. That would be so amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I'm in, I'm excited about that. Uh, DuckTales Remastered mm-hmm. was a great game. I played it on PlayStation 3. I would probably buy it again to play it on my Wii U because it was, uh, it was that enjoyable for me on the PlayStation cool. 3. And it would be neat. I mean, there was a lot of uh, 
everybody was complaining about the same thing with DuckTales, Re- DuckTales Remastered. Um, there were other complaints as well, but there was one complaint that everybody had, and that was that the dialogue <clears throat> was not, you couldn't turn yeah. the dialogue off. Yeah, that I, I could see that being a big issue. If they just have a, a way to skip it, um, like hit, uh, hit, hit any button a bunch of times and it pops up, would you want to skip? Hit B. And then if you do that, it skips it. I think yeah. that would get get rid of a lot of uh, people's problems. Yeah. Um, and, and if they, maybe they'll do that for the, uh, you know, maybe they'll patch the digital one. And when they, re- by the time they release the physical one, they'll have made that change. So that would be really nice. Yep. I, uh, I, I, I'm very, very excited about it. I, I, mm-hmm. it, I'm excited about it because for them to do this, um, it, it probably means that this sold well enough that they think that there is a market there for a, a retail copy. And if there's enough of a, um, of a sale of the downloadable version, that means that... Um, <laughs> sorry, I can't spell apparently. Um, we're just talking in the chat room and I typed the same word about 18 times and it was wrong every time. Oh, my bad. Um, so that means that <laughs> you also can't count. It was two. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm really screwed up. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, so there was enough people buying the, the DLC version or the downloadable version for them to say, we might as well come up with a disc version to sell more copies. That makes me think that um, that means that they're probably going to green light other remakes, which makes me really happy. If I could play Chippendale Rescue Rangers, if I could play Tailspin, if I could play any of the those old or even DuckTales 2 um, yeah. done the same way. That makes me really happy because those games were awesome on the NES. And I sure. really like the, what WayForward does to kind of reinvent them. So um, excited. I, I hope yeah. uh, I hope this actually works and comes out and all that fun stuff. That would be great. Awesome. Okay, moving on. Um, Atlas. We talked about them a lot on the show. We did. We talked about uh, rumor that uh, Nintendo might buy them, mm-hmm. and how what a great thing that would be. And figured, you know. But but you know what what the the end game of that is, Stephen, or the end result? Sega's got what Nintendo don't because yes. Sega is announcing yeah. that they are buying Atlas. Or yeah. I guess they didn't announce it, but it leaked out somehow. And um, yeah. and something like um, it was only $142 million. Uh, mm-hmm. So 14 billion yen. $142 million seems like a lot of money. But when you look at Atlas and all of the games that they've released from when they first started making games for the NES uh, all the way up to now, that is a lot of potential IP for re-release, for selling on virtual console, for ports for remakes um yep. that seems like a really cheap price to um to, to get all of that history gaming history so um yep. uh, it surprises me that nintendo did, wouldn't buy them but i guess maybe they didn't offer the same amount of money or maybe they weren't even interested in the first place um but i know a, a lot of atlas games have done really well on the 3ds and and uh, other nintendo platforms um yeah but yeah i mean that seems to me like it's uh it's a good price um Sega has confirmed it, um, and it is uh, now part of the company called Sega Dream Corporation. That just sounds made up. That that does. There's no way that could be true. Um, but anyway, this is all going to be wrapped up apparently by November first. Um, and yeah, so basically, what um, what's going to happen is uh, Sega will gain access to the prominent IPs. Um, they expect um, more revenue growth um, from their PC online gaming business, and uh, they want to also maximize the value of the acquired IPs um, by effectively deploying them in the um, <laughs> patch, pack, patch a slot and pachinko machine segment. So I guess they want to take a lot of the um, really classic Atlas games and make pachinko machines out of them, essentially, um, for installation in Japan. So I guess that's what the Sega Dream Corporation is. They're a big pachinko game makers i guess that mm-hmm. would pro- that'd be probably why i never heard of them before <laughs> but it's just so weird um but yeah sega has bought atlas um 141 million dollars seems like a steal um for all the atlas games that are out there so um i guess that means that um games aren't going to go away from atlas which is good because i kind of like some of their titles yeah and you know if if there's going to be a company that's going to <laughs> acquire atlas Sega is probably about the best because yep. Sega has been very, very liberal about exploiting their 
brands. And by exploiting, I don't mean that in, you know, in the sometimes considered negative way. But if you look at like the virtual console, there are tons of Sega games on there on the 3DS, on the Wii U. Uh, actually, are there any on the Wii U yet? Mm. They're all in 3DS at this point. Yeah. They know um, X, which will be out um, in at some point, which is that okay. crossover between, um, what is it, Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's announced. I don't believe that there is an actual Wii U title yet. Yeah. And this, and another thing that's great about this for Nintendo fans like us is that Sega has been working very closely with Nintendo lately, and so has Atlas. So it really kind of makes sense. Um, if you're on other platforms, then sure, it's good too. Because if you look at Steam, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of Sega games on Steam, even mm-hmm. ones that didn't originally come out on PC. All the sure. stuff that showed up on Game Tap eventually <laughs> migrated. Oh, I forgot over. about Game Tap. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's. I was in there. I was uh, one of their um, OS 10 beta users, so I got uh-huh. access to the whole uh, catalog for free as a beta tester. Cool. Um, and they invited me in. I got in. Uh, they did one client update, and then they shut down the service. I was like, "Damn it!" Uh-huh. I had about two months of free games, yeah. and beta updates, and crashing, um, and then they went away. It was really kind of sad. Oh, yeah, it was good. I like that service. It's a shame. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, um, Atlas is still around. That's that's really good. I was really hoping that something crazy wouldn't happen and that they were actually going to die a horrible death because that would have yeah. been bad for everybody involved. Um, which is a, a very obvious statement. Um, but uh, there you go. All right, moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, there is uh, some news uh, regarding the Mega Man, uh, sorry, the Mighty Number no. 9 and the Shantae uh, Kickstarters. And that is uh, Inti Crates, um, which is a company I didn't really hear of before. Um, but I guess they did Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10. Uh, yeah. They're, they're going to be working on both games. So uh, Shantae and Mighty Number no. 9, um, which is kind of neat because those are two kind of Kickstarter uh, hot kind of games that are doing pretty well mm-hmm. on Kickstarter. Um, and maybe that means there's going to be some f- sort of like cross promotion. And maybe um, some some characters are going to appear in both games. Like maybe there'll be some synergy between the two. Um, which is kind of neat, um, but it's also kind of ironic that a Mega Man developer is now going to be developing the game that is um, the spiritual successor to Mega Man. Um, I, you got to know that Capcom's not happy right now. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, and Shantae, I think, wasn't Shantae originally a Capcom game as well? I believe like so. Capcom published? Yeah, I think Capcom published the original on Game Boy Advance, I believe, or Game Boy Color, rather. Game Boy Color, yeah. Um, I believe so. So, yeah, it's just like... Not only did you walk and create a game that looks very much like the game that Capcom said they didn't want to make anymore, now you get the developer that made the last versions of those games, and, and then they're making your game. Um, it, you got to know that there's people um, in some corporate office that are just fuming right now, throwing tables and chairs and desks and Mega, yep. Ma- Mega Man stuffies and, uh, <laughs> and, and those heads that were used in Dead Rising. They're just being tossed everywhere because um, they're probably pretty angry about this whole thing. Yeah. But I mean, you had your chance. Um, you have a character, yeah. a beloved character that a lot of people like. I mean, it's not universally loved, but there are a lot of people that are fans, um, as can be seen by the fact that the um, the actual Kickstarter is um, a two point two million, which is our next story. Um, t- yeah. Over over almost two point three million, which is crazy. Which means that Mighty Number no. Nine will be coming to the Wii U, uh, which is the platform that I want to play it on. So that yeah, makes me. Too really really happy mm-hmm. so um yeah kickstarter uh, i'm gonna load it up right now it's got 12 days to go and, and it's, it's at almost 2.3 million yeah 2.294288 um they only wanted 900,000, and they're more uh if, if math um doesn't fail me this time because i know that i had problems counting to two I think 2.2 <laughs> million is more than 900,000. Um, I'm not positive. I think so too. But I, I think so. Um, yes. And that's really, really good. And they're not even in the last week of their Kickstarter where most Kickstarters gain like a huge percentage of their total um, funds. Um, hmm. Yeah. So they, yeah, have, they put in some new stretch goals and stuff like PS4 and xbox uh, one x bone yeah the x versions at 3.3 3, yeah. so they're uh they're about a million away from that yeah so um, it seems unlikely um i guess my understanding is that the the unity engine that they would use for for this <clears throat> um the licensing fee 
to for Unity Engine on PS4 uh, or PS3 or PS4 is like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Wow! And the same for Xbox 360 and Xbox One. I think they have to pay it per platform. That's a lot of money just for a compile point. Yeah, you know what the Wii U one costs? Um, oh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. 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 You, I saw that on uh, Twitter. Well, Emily actually, Rogers. that is not absolutely true because you nope. have to buy the wii u dev kit which i think is about twenty five hundred dollars from nintendo okay so you buy the dev kit and you get it for free but yeah. still that is a lot less than a hundred thousand for a yes. for a download on top of the dev kits that you have to buy from, yeah from uh, sony or or uh, microsoft microsoft yeah so nintendo's definitely doing a lot right mm-hmm. right there yeah for sure Cool. So, um, yeah, a couple a couple good news items from uh, some really great Kickstarters that we're fans here, uh, or, or mm-hmm. at least um, we're fans of the ideas. Who knows what the games are going to turn out to be? Um, but with Inti Create um, in in the mix, you know that it's yeah. going to be uh, a non Mega Man game that is going to feel like Mega Man, which is yeah, good. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they they made. I mean, you said they made Mega Man Nine and Ten, but. Mm-hmm. They weren't called into creates before Mega Man 9, but this is the same dev team that made all the Mega Man games. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I just yeah. thought they were they were they just made the other the nine and ten. Oh yep. well. No, they made all of them. They made the zero, <laughs> Mega Man Zero games, Mega Man X games. That is even more hilarious. Yeah. Um so <laughs> <laughs> So the creator of Mega Man leaves Capcom and then creates a company to make a game that isn't Mega Man but is Mega Man. It staffs it with the Mega Man dev team. So essentially he just he just created a coup um mm-hmm. to take take over Mega Man from Capcom. Yep. And there's nothing they can do about it. Yep. Well I guess they could. They could sue him for in, in intellectual IP theft or um confusion. Look and feel Look would and be feel. the trick. Yeah, there'd be yeah. like the trade dress lawsuit or something. Um, there could be something like that, I guess, um, but I hope not. Um, if I, they're going to settle, it's going to end at like four point one million, and then they're going to settle for four point one million dollars, and everyone's going to be like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly." <laughs> it's going to be uh, it's going to be horrible. But do you know what would be really awesome if Capcom lets them do it? Um, they sell millions and millions of dollars worth of stuff, and then we actually get. Um, a company that really loves Mega Man to take over um, the Mega Man type games. So we could see more uh, games that are like Mega Man, but not from yep. Capcom anymore, because apparently they don't like that IP anymore. And this is exciting because, you know, this is an opportunity for, um, you know, for this team who obviously are very, very talented mm-hmm. to make something that is vaguely reminiscent of Mega Man, but they can still create all this new stuff. In yep. the games, all these new concepts and things that never would have flown in Mega Man. Everyone would have been like, what is this? This isn't Mega Man. What is this crap? Now it's not Mega Man, <laughs> but it's also Mega Man. Yeah, so you can't bitch you know I mean? that it, that it's in, insulting to the, the long history of Mega Man because it's not Mega Man. Yep, that's, exactly. That's great. It's a, it gives them a great starting point. Shut and, up the haters. Uh, I'm so exciting. I'm so excited about it. That's cool. So excited about the game. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, that's going to about do it for uh, today's show. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks to the people that are in the live stream, even though we're doing it on a day that's different than our normal day. And uh, apologies in advance to anybody that shows up on Thursday um, when we're not actually doing the show. Um, The reason for the change this week is uh, hockey is back on, and I got free tickets (laughs) to go to the game tomorrow. So I can't pass up free tickets, which would have cost me hundreds of dollars. Um, So I'm taking those tickets, and I am enjoying a game. And some beer and a hot dog, probably. Um, cool. It'll be a fun time tomorrow. Hockey's back and Lloyd is in Canada. Yeah, that's no more explanation needed. No, that's that's it. That's it. That's it. All right, guys. Poutine's uh, back in season. <laughs> it is. I could actually get poutine at the hockey hockey arena at the MTS that's Center. That's awesome. I'll have to get some. I'm, they have they have a really great that. pulled pork poutine. It's really good. Mm. The pulled pork they they make is really good there. Chipotle pulled pork. It's really good. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome to uh, the, the next episode of the Food Cast here on the VG Podcast Network. <laughs> um, thanks for right tuning- after the coffee and tea cast. Yeah, we're going to start up like a dozen shows. It's going to be great. I will have no free time. This is going to be awesome. Got to cancel bonus stage and touch of gaming. Yeah. Sorry, Quacko. Sorry, Jeff Ward. Um, you guys are gone. We're doing we're doing food here on the network now. All right, guys, we we love uh, hearing from you. Head on over to VGPodcast.com and let us know how we're doing. Uh, You can uh, email us at VGPodcast at gmail.com or you can call our voicemail line, which is area code 5. 
05 VG Podcast. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Uh, find us on Stitcher, find us on iTunes, or directly at the website. Love hearing from you guys. Uh, love that you're listening, and hopefully you're digging the show as well. So uh, until next week, uh, take it easy, and have a great week, I guess. Bye, everyone.